to all Americans. But then Susan Collins took over $1.5 million from drug and insurance companies and voted seven times to allow insurance companies to once again discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions like cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. Susan Collins, she's not for you anymore. Forbes magazine says a main bank makes global marks. The story tonight. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our new Center Maine Voice of the Voter Forum with the Republican candidates for Congress in Maine's 2nd District. We are joined remotely by Adrian Bennett of Bangor, a former broadcast journalist who is also well known as press secretary for former Governor Paul LePage. Also, Dale Crafts of Lisbon, a businessman and a former state representative. The third candidate in this race in the primary, Eric Brakey, declined our invitation to participate. Over the next half hour, I'm going to be posing questions to the candidates, including some submitted by viewers. Each candidate will be able to respond to all issues raised, and each will have time for a closing statement. So we're grateful you can both be with us. Appreciate it. Uh, even under these circumstances, we can't be face to face. We can still talk about what's going on. Uh, so let me begin with this. You've both expressed strong support for President Trump. Do you think that he has met the expectation we have of presidents in times of crisis to unify people rather than further divide us? And Adrian, I'd start with you on that. Sure. I first want to say thank you for the opportunity to participate in this first televised debate. Mainers, they do deserve to hear from all three of us as candidates. It's a very important primary. And as the only candidate in this race who has supported President Trump since day one, and in fact worked for President Trump back in 2016 on his campaign, I'm excited to help move forward the America First agenda, and I'm going to fight for Mainers. And so has he unified us and how good of a job has he done? Yes, absolutely. I think that he has um, that ability to do so and he has done so so far. And we are in some unprecedented, unusual times for our country. Um, but Mainers in the second district, just like across our nation, we're not looking for a career politician. And Mainers are not looking for that. You um, don't need to rise up through the ranks in politics to be su a successful leader and to act in the best interest of Americans and Mainers. Look at President Trump. He's not the career politician. And, um, you know, so I, I, you know, want to just say that, um, you know, I worked long, hard hours um, to get to where I am. And for nearly seven years, as mentioned, I was um, the spokesperson for the most colorful and the most controversial governor in our state. And I was that primary spokesperson for the administration, which led tax, welfare, and fiscal reform. And I was raised in Waldo County. I know my roots. I worked my entire life um, and it built a work ethic. You know, I grew up dirt poor. I grew up with no indoor plumbing. I cut, split and stacked wood. Mm -hmm. And because of this, it's that work ethic that served me well. And that has served President Trump well too. He wants to truly make America great again. And, you know, so when we look at things like holding China accountable, when we look at things like securing our border and holding our, um, our Right, bringing back fiscal sanity. He's but, doing. But let me ask you this: Adrian, if I you believe he's unified us at a time of the pandemic and of the racial unrest? Yeah, I think that we um, are in a very partisan time. We are in a divide within our country because you know, if you are Republican, you um, have one set of ideologies. If you are a Democrat, you have another set of ideologies. We do need to come together, but we have that as a responsibility as people. And yes, I do believe that President Trump has the power to unify us. And it's the people who truly are listening. He wants to make America great for everybody, not just one demographic over another. We're all in this together. Well, let me bring Dale in on this. Do you think he has done the job that presidents do of bringing us together? Yeah, I think he uh, showed some real leadership coming out you know, every day, uh, informing us of what's going on, where things are at, updating us with all the doctors and professionals. I think he did his very best to try to inform us um, with everything that was going on. I mean, certainly nobody was prepared for that, including him and his administration. I mean, this is something that nobody saw coming. Uh, I think that he did a full court press of trying to do his very best to inform us and, and uh, 
put the doctors out there. So, yeah, I think he has. The problem is, uh, as Adrian said, uh, the, the partisan divide is unbelievable. I mean, there's nothing that President Trump, Trump has done since he became president that uh, they haven't attacked him on, even stuff that wasn't even true, like the collusion, and, and then he tried to impeach him, and now you've got this going on. They're trying to, you know, attack him as a, as a, uh, a racist. I mean, it just goes on and on. You know, it's time for this country to work together. We're in very difficult times, and I just we just got to unite. And I think going down to Washington, D.C., being the businessman, I have a lifetime long of business. business. Yes, I am a politician. And I did serve my four terms in the legislature. But, you know, most of my life has been creating jobs and starting businesses. And uh, so I think that experience matters. Well, let's talk about what's going on in Washington. There are some new initiatives that have come from the, uh, the countless protests and demonstrations over the last few weeks, the Justice and Policing Act, for example. What would you do to try to address the concerns raised by black Americans and many others about systemic racism and police brutality against blacks? Dale? Well, I'll tell you, well, certainly uh, what, what took place is uh, very sad. Uh, my heart breaks for the family and for the death of uh, George, and uh, we certainly need probably some reform. I, now, over the years, I can remember back when I had an issue with a law enforcement person, I went to his commander, to the lieutenant, and uh, to put a complaint in. He said, well, what's the gentleman's name? And I told him that. And he said, well, we have a, we have a few bad apples. And, and no matter what industry you're in, or whether it's police or anything else, there's always going to be a few bad apples. Now, it sounds like this guy had a lot of complaints along the way, and uh, something should have been done about it. So maybe there's some reforms there that can prove that uh, when these people have a lot of complaints that uh, you know, we need to fi figure out a way to, to get to the bottom of it so we don't have something like this happening again. Uh, I, it, what's going on in the country you know, to defund the, the police departments, I, I think it's ludicrous. I mean, it don't make any sense. So if you've got an elderly person that's home and somebody's breaking in, who do they call? You know, how do they be protected? So I don't, that's not the answer. Adrian, yes, what steps would you, you what try to take to address the, the unrest and, and, the, and what many will say are legitimate complaints that black Americans are raising? Well, first I want to say is that uh, Congresswoman Shelley Pingree is bought and paid for, and what she's put forward is a measure to score political points. What we need to do is truly be solutions oriented. I believe that if we're going to have a conversation about this, then it needs to revolve around budgeting. And something that we did in the administration was zero uh, based budgeting. You have to go from the top down. You have to look at absolutely everything within a budget. Reform doesn't come from a list of demands. It comes through conversations and a variety of people at the table willing to identify and reach common ground. So you take a look at your budget from the top down, needs versus wants. You prioritize. And uh, the conversation, as we've seen over the past few days, it has gone from defunding the police and the uh, people who are pushing this have realized that that is too radical. I stand with our law enforcement. I am the one candidate in this race who will always stand and support our law enforcement. And that doesn't mean that justice cannot be served for George Floyd and his family and that those officers can, uh, they need to be held accountable and justice must be served. But if we're looking at reforms, we have to have a willingness to have a conversation about the real budgets. I've been in a position where I've had to choose between needs and wants with my bills that I have to pay. And we have to do that as a society because it's taxpayer money at the end of the day. And we can't fund absolutely everything that we need, whether it's with the police department or our social programs. Now, speaking, now, speaking of budgets, of the nation has taken on trillions of dollars in new debt because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, are, are you concerned about the, that problem and how to pay it back? For example, would you have voted for the PPP and the CARES Act, Adrian? Yes, I would have voted for the initial package and the PPP because our nation and Mainers needed that support at that time. What we need to take a long, hard look at is the spending, and we will, in the next session, um, look at the things that were done right, look at the things that were done wrong and what we can improve, uh, improve upon. But the trillions and trillions of dollars we have um, that we're racking up, we need to stop. Um, we need to take a long, hard look at, again, what the needs are and what the priorities are. Needs and wants are very different. And we have to look at cutting things. I think that the 2017, 2018 Congress did a good job with the tax cuts, but they didn't go far enough in uh, the, the cuts in spending. 
So um, you just, the devil is always in the details. These budgets are literally thousands of pages long and you have to have that willingness to take a deep dive into them and pick out the things that don't belong. And we saw in this CARES package, things that Nancy Pelosi and others were putting in as the pork, as we say, and the uh, unnecessary spending. So, so we have to- Dale, how, do you, how would you address this new debt? Well, I tell you, when I was out, when we were campaigning until this all shut us down, uh, my message was everywhere I went is just think about this. I tell the audience, think about this. You know, we, we had an economy that was stronger than ever. You know, they was t saying that the, uh, the revenues coming in was higher than ever, but yet we had a, a billion dollar budget deficit, Never mind the $23 trillion worth of debt. And I said, well, if we can't balance the budget in this economy, when are we ever going to? And now we have all this money we borrow to stimulate the economy. And, and really, it was a choice of two bad decisions. Either you don't fund it and put the money in, and, and more jobs are lost, more people are hurt, more houses are foreclosed, and the long-term effects of that uh, was probably worse than it is more debt. So what we got to do as a businessman, you got to plan ahead. You know, uh, you got to look at numbers. I know that in my business, and I've run business all my life, come from a business family, you know, I, I look at financial statements. My opponents don't look at financial statements. They've never run a business. I have to look at them monthly. I have to see where the numbers are going. And so I do that. When I get down to, to Washington, I'm going to do the same thing. Government does not run efficient. They do not run like a small business. A small business has to have a bottom line and has to show a profit. And you've got to make them mortgage payments. And so it isn't like the government where you can just, well, we don't even print money. I was watching a guy on the Fed. He said, we just click money. You know, if I had a mouse, you know, you could just keep putting money in your bank account. And that's what we're doing. That needs to end. We need to be prepared for the next time we, uh, something comes in our country like this again, and that, and, and not to have to go borrow trillions of dollars to keep to keep afloat. Because really, that's what we're trying to do: is keep the economy afloat by borrowing money. That's always a bad thing. All right. With that, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with more of our new Center Maine Voice of the Voter Candidate Forum, and after right after the break. The first company we had in, it just felt like a high pressure sale. And then we had Renewal by Anderson come over. It was very comfortable. It was very um, relaxed environment. It just was not a high pressure kind of situation. Having a quality American made product is, is key for us. You know, we know, especially when you know it's gonna last, you're gonna be happy with the product. We enjoyed the whole process um, from the quote right into through the installation. Everything that they told us they would do was done. And the price that was quoted to us never went up, uh, even with repairs they had to perform when they did replace the windows. So there were no surprises at all. For our 25th anniversary, our biggest sale ever, 25% off your order, or no down payment, no interest, and no payments for 25 months. Call 207-699-2466. Why are drivers 50 and over switching to the AARP auto insurance program from the Hartford? Let's take a ride with some actual customers and find out. Hey, well, tell me about your experience when you switched to the Hartford. When I switched to the Hartford, I'm sitting there thinking, man, I, I should have turned 50 years ago. They saved me a bunch of money. You can't beat that. What blows me away about the Hartford is their lifetime renewability benefit. Now, this is their promise not to drop you, you know, even if you have an accident. I know when I'm driving, I'm covered. Drivers 50 and over can save hundreds of dollars when they switch to the AARP auto insurance program from the Hartford. Not an AARP member? The Hartford can help you join in minutes. To get your free no obligation quote and see how much you could save, call the Hartford at 1-800-683-7129 or go to gohartfordauto.com. The Bucks got your back. Welcome back to our News Center Maine Voice of the Voter Forum with the Republican candidates for Congress in Maine's second district. We're talking with Adrian Bennett and with Dale Crafts, the third candidate in this primary. Eric Brakey declined to take part. Uh, Dale, we have a couple of questions that were submitted by viewers. I'll start with you on this. Many Mainers are upset with the way the Maine Department of Labor has handled the spike in unemployment claims in the last three months. Is there anything the federal government should be doing to help fix that problem? Dale? Dale? 
Well, I, you know, I'm not sure if Governor Mills would allow him to come in to fix it. Uh, you know, we've had a really hard time to even build a, you know, we don't have a, a what I call a representative government right now. We have a one branch of government. It's called the executive branch. And it seems that she wouldn't want, want any help from uh, President anyways, because as you see, you, you've heard the words spoke and, and the criticism that's gone towards the president from our governor. And so I'm not sure that the federal government could help. But yes, I think that the how you fix that the labor problem is, you know, there's a lot of the departments are basically shut down where there's not a lot of activity going on. So you've got plenty of main employees where that you can just send over to the labor department. You know, business guy would put together, bring in a, a bunch of people, throw the staff, switch people that, you know, that from one, one particular job over there to help the labor department so that people could get their unemployment. There's no need of that. If you had a businessman as governor, I guarantee you, we'd had a lot less problems. Adrian, so is there something you could do if you were in Congress to try to help this issue? It is a state, is. Mem uh, state problem, but it is pretty widespread. Well, I think, oh. again, we'll, oh, go ahead, Adrian, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, um, I, I don't think we should start a precedent with the federal government coming in and helping with our state agencies. I'm very intimately familiar with the Department of Labor. There are five departments. What we have here is a top-down approach where our uh, executive branch and Governor Mills has taken sole power and used it unilaterally, and she's not um, done what she needs to do to ensure that DOL has all the tools to succeed and to get unemployment checks out to folks and to answer their calls. I worked at the Department of Labor when we turned over uh, the computer system and that was nearly flawless. So there, uh, it's, it's all about in how you're setting up your people and your departments and agencies to succeed. And she has failed at doing that. Do I think that the federal government could help out? Well, you know what, if we had a governor who had a rapport with President Trump, then maybe so, but we don't. And she's unwilling to find a solution because she is so partisan. And again, the only candidate here in Congress who supported President Trump since day one, and we need to turn over that Congress so we can get work done for all Americans and for Mainers too. Another question from a viewer that perhaps the federal government can help with is how would you go about supporting Maine's tourism industry and the small businesses that rely on it as we head into what looks to be a very slow summer season? Adrian? Is that to me, Pat? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you've got to reopen Maine. And you know, right now uh, we have so many businesses that have closed and we know that our economy in the summertime is driven by our tourism, by our hospitality industry. And again, Governor Mills has refused to listen to the stakeholders, the people at the table whose livelihoods are affected by this. And it's simply unacceptable and we can't tolerate it. And that's why I've been in Augusta to protest and let Governor Mills know in her executive office that she really needs to listen to the people of Maine, reopen it so they can get their livelihoods back on track. And if we don't, we're going to have years and years of an economic recovery. Um, right now, I think it's in upwards of five to seven years of recovery with how many businesses we're losing at this point. Dale Crafts, yeah. if you were in Congress right now, what would you be trying to do to help Maine's tourism industry? Well, I'll tell you, I would certainly be encouraging the governor as much as I could in working with the governor, coming up and saying, I would like to meet as a businessman. I'd like to sit down with other business leaders and figure out a way to open up Maine. We just need to open up Maine. You know what? Government's job is not to unconstitutionally shut us down and stop commerce, because I don't believe that she has the power to do that. When you, if you look at the Constitution, there's no emergency exceptions to the Bill of Rights. And so we see this going on and it's very disturbing as I have business, I had over a hundred businesses contact me. Uh, some stories that left messages when I couldn't answer the phone brought tears to my eyes. It's, it's, it just breaks your heart to see what's going on in this great state. This damage is gonna last for such a long time. Governor Mills always has worked for the government. She doesn't understand small business. Evidently, she's not surrounded herself with small business people to help open up the economy. This needs to open up now and I just don't understand, uh, you know, her job is to inform us about the virus. Her job is to tell us how to stay safe. Her job is to, to give us all the information that we could have to make our adult decision as free Americans in Mainers to decide our own destiny, not her. That's uh, what uh, makes the country great. Some Democrats have been calling for student loan debt to be wiped out. I, 
Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's probably a little extreme for many, but what do you think, Dale, should be done to try to help and encourage Americans to be able to go to college? Well, I don't, I don't think, uh, I think people ought to be responsible, responsible for their own decisions. And uh, sometimes I do think that we encourage uh, a lot of kids to go off to university or college that maybe ought to go off to trade school. And I think that we got away from that when I was in high school. I went to shop class and uh, wood class, you know, metal class and wood class. And I ended up, you know, I can, I can pretty much build anything. The only problem I have being in the chair, sometimes I can't reach it, but I know how to do it. And I learned all that. I can uh, run a business, I can build stuff, and I can do trades. I can plumb, I can do electrical, I can do a lot of things. And uh, you know, there, there's so many jobs out there. Being a small businessman, I couldn't hire anybody. It's been tough the last several years. You try to hire somebody, it's a month or two out. And so, you know what? We need to encourage trade schools. We need to open them back up. We need workforce training. So when this economy booms back again, you got businesses can grow because they can hire somebody. So the federal government needs to look at that and not push so many kids to university. Adrian, what do you think? Well, I went to what was considered a community college, New England School of Communications in Bangor. It's now in Hudson University. And we need more people in Congress who know what it's like to be in community college. As far as the student debt, you know, I was able to get through that and pay my way through um, that program because it was less expensive. My daughter, who's 20 years old now, Caitlin, I had her when I was 20 years old. Uh, keep, keep that in mind, too, when I was going to NESCOM. But she is 20 years old now. She's attending a community college in Southern Maine. She's studying business. And guess what? She's debt free. And she's worked since she's been 15 years old. And so she's been able to pay her way through. She didn't know what she wanted to do going into college. So she made a very smart decision to go to a community college and get those credits uh, at a lower cost. She will go on to a university for her last year, more than likely, and get that bachelor's degree. But you can lower cost by being creative and utilizing our college, our community college system. Again, and yes, I agree that we need to focus, you know, more on the trades and stop pushing our kids toward the university if that's not what we have available here in Maine for our jobs. But we have to also you know, keep our kids here. To keep our kids here, we have to have the jobs. We have to have the economy. So we need to broaden our infrastructure, broadband, fiber optic. We need to bring back manufacturing. We do that by holding China accountable and bringing incentivizing businesses to do their business here and be competitive. And the only way that we do that is uh, through a variety of things, including uh, the things that I just mentioned. All right, great. We're going to need to take another break. We'll be right back with more of our Voice of the Voter Candidate Forum right after this. everywhere stop fighting the litter box battle when I had to clean it it was a nightmare people walk into our house and that's what they would smell first and it drove me nuts stop lugging heavy containers stop breathing in dust and dealing with that smell introducing kitty poo club the all-in-one litter box delivered to you every month kitty poo club reinvented the litter box using recycled cardboard lined with resilient waterproof coating to protect against leaks each box comes with odor-resistant natural silica litter that traps odor molecules while allowing the liquid to evaporate. Simply remove your kitty's poo every day and give the litter a stir. That's it. It does not smell when you come into our house. For as long as we have cats, we will be a Kitty Poo Club member. Go to TryKittyPooClub.com now and get started for just $21.49. Use coupon code TV and save 15% off your first order. Plus, get a free scoop, a free box dome, and always free shipping. You'll love Kitty Poo Club or your money back. Go to TryKittyPooClub.com now. Seven is sponsored and powered by Central Maine Power. These will be the images that will archive this moment in our history. But let these two 
The Quiet Peacemakers, picking up the pieces. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Back with our Voice of the Voter Forum with the Republican candidates in Maine 2nd District. Dale Crafts, you've talked a lot about reducing the size of federal government. Tell us a couple of things we can either do without or drastically reduce. Well, I think sometimes when you look around the money that we spend around the world, and I'm all for, you know, America's a, a wealthy nation, but I'm all for helping out other nations. Sometimes I think money goes towards uh, nations that maybe are not so friendly. And I think that we ought to pay our bills before we pay somebody else's bills. You know, the president's been really big about uh, these other countries that are not stepped up, you know, the, the, uh, the our, our friendly country, countries that are not stepping up and doing their part to help police the world. All right, Adrian, so, Adrian, same question for you, please. Sure, I think President Trump has done a good job um, asking and uh, in fact, uh, you know, demanding that the agencies and departments take a look at their budgets and provide him some cuts. And we need that. We did that in the LePage administration. It's called zero-based budgeting. You start with nothing, and then you add the programs that you need most, and then you add in the wants um, if you have enough funding. Because again, it's taxpayer money that we're talking about here, whether it's federal or state. Good. We want to uh, give you each a minute for a closing statement. So, Adrian Bennett, the floor is yours. Well, the reason I'm here today is simple because I'm a Mainer, and I know what it means. We're tough. We have grit. We're fighters. I'm a fighter. In high school, when my mom left me, she moved to Ohio. I refused to be trapped by welfare. I wanted a better life for me and my daughter, Katie. And as a young mom, I put myself through college. I worked three jobs because I could and because that's what I did to make ends meet. I'm running because I want to fight for all of us. And I want to fight for our values and help President Trump pass his America First agenda, build that wall, drain the swamp, including all the career politicians. I'll fight to support our law enforcement. I will fight to protect innocent life. I'll fight to fix our broken welfare system. I'll fight to stop the gun grabbers in their attacks on us. And I will break through the fake news. This is an election of our lifetimes, and President Trump needs a fighter in Congress who is there with him from day one. I'm the only candidate in this race who has been with him consistently, and when I'm elected, I'll proudly stand with him, and I will serve every one of you very well. Adrian Bennett, thanks so much. And Dale Crafts, one minute closing statement. Well, thank you, Pat. It's been, it's been great to be here. Uh, I just want to come say that I am the only Repub Republican from day one. Uh, I, I became Republican uh, when I was 18 years old at high school, and I, my opponents can't say that. I would like to say this, that experience matters. I have a lot of experience. You know, I, I, I did serve four terms. I termed out, I went back to work in my business and hiring people and expanding some more businesses. And then I got a call from former Governor Paul LePage, who called me up and said, Dale, we think that you're the guy, the only guy in the race that can beat Jared Golden in the general. Would you consider running? Well, I can tell you that was very humbling to get that from him. It's been very humbling to go on and to have 50 former and sitting legislators endorse me, uh, 50 veterans, uh, 60 sportsmen. I am launching tomorrow night 70 businesses that have endorsed me. Uh, Sean Moody, uh, we're, we're launching a, 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 a video for his endorsement as a businessman. Uh, uh, 24 Dale, I'm hours sorry, hours. I'm going to I'm gonna have to cut you off there. The time is up. I appreciate your time. Remember, primary election day is July 14th. Absentee ballots are available now. Thanks for being with us. In the last year, there were three victims of cybercrime every second.